back of the series of uh, solving problems from the electrical A1 circuit uh, exam for PEO, the professional in engineering in Ontario and in Canada. So uh, we finished the first question, which is about circuit reduction. Now we are talking about the second question, which is about DC analysis techniques. We did uh, the first question nodal before, and this is a second nodal question, a bit different than the previous one. And the difference between this question and the previous one is the uh, use of dependent voltage sources. So what is the difference between an independent voltage source and a dependent voltage source? An independent voltage source is like this voltage source. It supplies 15 volt between node V1 and V2. Now, if I change the value of the resistors, if I change the configuration of uh, the, uh, the circuit, still this will be 15 volt. This is why it's called an independent voltage source. On the other hand, uh, this uh, voltage supply, which is giving you 2VX, its value, it depends on another variable. So, and this VX is the voltage between V1 and V4. This is your VX. So, whatever the value of VX, the supply here will give you twice of that value. So, if I change the value of this resistance or any other resistor, if I change the values of the supplies, if I change the circuit configuration, this VX will be changing. And this will lead to the change of the supply itself. This is why it's called a dependent voltage source. So that is the main difference between this question and the previous question. So let's start to solve this question. As I mentioned before, all nodal questions that I have seen in the BO exam, they will specify to you the nodes. So you, are, you shouldn't worry about that. And they will specify the reference point which is in this case here, this is the reference, and this is grounded. We grounded means that the voltage V here is equal to zero. One of the rules we mentioned before that you should not apply KCL to any node that is connected to a voltage supply. And the reason for that, because now you have to include another current, another variable, so you are increasing the size of the problem, and we don't want to do that because this will complicate the solution. So here, let's say V1 is connected to the positive side of the 15 volt. V2 is connected to the negative side. So I can't apply KCL here or there. V3 is connected to the positive side of the dependent voltage supply. And V4 is connected to the negative side of the voltage supply. So it means that I can't apply KCL to any of the four node voltages and this is somehow considered as an extreme case sometimes you have a couple of nodes you can apply kcl and others you cannot but we'll see how we'll handle this so the first thing that we can handle is to relate the two nodes with the voltage in between them meaning here if you look to the 15 volt basically you can say that v1 minus v2 is equal to 15 volt and this is our first equation. Okay. Now, why V1 minus V2, not the other way around? Because the positive side is at V1. With the same understanding, we can say that V3 minus <coughs> V4 is equal to the voltage in between, which is 2Vx. Now, here I'm adding another unknown, which is Vx. My objective because at the end of the day here, we need to solve. In B, we have to solve for node voltages. We, as we increase the size of the problem, increase the size of the variables, we are complicating our problems. So we want to reduce the size of the problem. So what is Vx? Your Vx, but your Vx is basically equal to, is the voltage difference between V1 and V4. So it's equal to V1 minus V4. So I can substitute this here. So substitute. So basically your V3 minus V4 will equal to two times V1 minus V4 equal to 
2 v1 minus 2 v4 will arrange the equations so we'll have here 2 v1 okay and then we will take this to the other side with the positive so it becomes minus v4 and take v3 to the other sides minus v3 and this is equal to zero and this is our second equation so now remember we have four unknowns so i need four equations i got two by relating the two nodes to the voltage source in between i need two more equations and here we comes the concept of sober node so basically what i will do these two nodes that has the supply in between them so what i will do so I will cover all of this as if this is just one big sober node. And this I will call it number one. So I will call apply KCL to super node number number one. Okay. Now assume all the currents are leaving, except if you have a current supply, you can touch its direction. So assume the current is leaving in this direction here, the current is leaving in that direction, and the current here is leaving in this direction. So we start from the V1 side. So you will have V1 divided by five. This is the current that goes down, the current that goes up, plus V1 minus V4 divided by five, again. Plus, now we finish the V1 side, we go to the V2 side. So we have one current, basically v2 minus v3 divided by the resistance in between which is 2 ohm and then finally we have this current source is entering the node so minus 5 or equal to 5 okay now this equation i don't like to see anything in the denominator so i will multiply by the least most common denominator which is 5 times 2 so i will multiply everything times 10 so we will have multiply the whole equations by 10. So we will have 2v1 plus 2v1 minus 2v4 plus 5v2 minus 5v3 equal to 5050. Now we add terms. So we will have here 4v1 plus 5v2 minus 5v3 minus 2v4 and this is equal to 50 now this is the last uh, form of the equation so this is number three with the same understanding we will do the same thing here between v3 and v4 this is number two so apply KCL to super node number two. Again, we will assume the currents are leaving. Now here, I don't care what was the current in the previous step. I can reiterate my basically my current direction here. So I don't really care about the current, so I will just remove this current. I remove this current direction. So as if we start fresh here. So I don't care how, what was the current direction that we used uh, before. So here we will have current from V3 to V2, V3 here, V4 to the ground, and V4 there. So we'll apply the KCL. So we start from the V3 side. So V3 to the left minus V2 divided by 2 the voltage here minus the voltage there divided by the resistance in between down plus v3 minus 0 divided by 6 because the voltage here is the reference is equal to 0 same thing at v4 plus v4 divided by 2 minus 0 of course plus v4 minus v1 divided by 5 and that's it so we have 1 2 three four currents so we have one two three four terms this is equal to, to zero so what is the least most common denominator which is five times six so we multiply everything times three zero so we'll have here 
15 v3 minus v2 plus 5 v3 plus 15 v4 plus 6 v4 minus v1 equal to 0 so we'll have minus 6 v1 and then v2 we have minus 15 v2 and then v3 we have 15 plus 5 so plus 20 v3 plus v4 15 plus 6 21 v4 and this is equal to this is the last thing equal to to zero and this is equation number four so this is the first requirement here is to write down the four needed equations now the question is how to solve these equations so one way to do that is trying to solve the equations one at a time okay so you can eliminate the variables so for example you can say v1 equal to 15 minus plus v2 and in every equation has a v1 you substitute that with v2 so you'll have now three equations with three unknowns and you keep do doing this or by eliminations but in my opinion this is not a very consistent way of solving this the best way is to write down or to put everything into a matrix form and let's see how we can do that so let me write down first the four equations we have in their final form so v1 minus v2 is equal to 15 and then we have 2 v1 minus v3 minus v4 equal to 0 and then we will have 4 v1 plus 5 v2 minus 5 v3 minus 2 v4 equal to 50 and then finally we will have minus 6 v1 minus 15 v2 plus 20 v3 plus 21 v4 equal to 0. So these are the four equations. So how to solve them? We put them in a matrix form as a times x equal to b. What is a? It's a 4 by 4 matrix times x. x is, are the variables. So in our case, it's v1, v2, v3, v4 equal to the output vector here so what is a you go <coughs> to fill the first row come here the coefficient of v1 is 1 coefficient of v2 is minus 1 v3 is 0 and v4 is 0 because there's no v3 or v4 in this equation and then you go to the second second equation so basically you will have v1 is 2 v2 is 0 minus 1 and minus one then you will have equation number three we'll have four for v1 here five for v2 minus five for v3 and minus two for v4 and finally we'll have minus six minus 15 20 and 21 so this is the equation or the matrix a this is x the variables and b is your output that you have here 15 0 50 and 0 one of the most consistent way of solving this system of equations or this matrix is using gaussian elimination Now, because the scope of this uh, videos is only to analyze the circuit, I will keep in the description a link uh, where I explain in details this Gaussian eliminations. I have uh, one video that describes this method, how to do it with some examples. So please refer to that video so you can see how to solve these equations. Now, when you solve them after using the Gaussian elimination, or there are many other techniques, but I feel Gaussian is one of the easiest techniques and a very consistent technique. We found that the V1 is equal to minus 13.7931. V2 is equal to minus 28.7931. And V3 
3 is equal to minus 64.6552. Finally, V4 is equal to 37.0690. One way to check that if your answer is correct or not, you can go and apply these to the equation. So, for example, you apply to equation number one, V1 minus V2 minus 13.7931 minus minus 28. 0.7931 is basically equal to 15, which is satisfy the equation. And you can try to see this apply to uh, all the other equations. So please uh, have a look to that video, how to deal with the Gaussian elimination so that you can see how we can solve these equations. And by the way, you will need the, this technique, which is how to deal with the linear equations when you go for even for the other examples. For example, if we deal with the uh, mesh analysis, which will be the, our third question, uh, this is one of the circuit techniques that is used uh, in the BO exam. Again, you will end up having some uh, set of equations. So we need to, to learn about, about this uh, technique.